Welcome to part one of choosing the parts to build a gaming system. So one of the most critical factors on what you can achieve in building a gaming system is your budget, really. So basically your budget will determine how much you can cram into that computer to get as much frames per second performance in the game that you're looking for. So we're just going to begin. Um, I try and stick to, just remember what we're going to go for here is a kind of like a basic gaming system. We're not going for a full high-end system. Um, it's more of a gaming computer, like an everyday average gaming computer that will just A, press a button and turn on, and B, play games all day long. So generally the motherboards I choose um, in this situation for a workstation style um, or basic gaming system is this motherboard here. It's the H97M Dash Plus. The reason why I choose this motherboard is that it's an all-rounder type motherboard. Um, has, I believe, some PCI slots in there. I think you can connect serial ports, parallel ports, if you really, really, really need to. Um, but it's an all-round board. And by keeping the boards like a basic board and a higher performing board all the same, um, if there's ever any problems, it's very easy for me to replace it for a customer. So we choose this board for a lot of our uh, i5, i7 base computers, um, H97M dash plus. The reason why we choose this one is um, for the 97 part of the chipset um, and we kind of keep it simple between the two boards. Um, there's no one model better than another model, but I can tell you now that you can have a H97M dash plus and you can have a H97M dash E or H97M dash P and the other versions of the board can have significant problems and I have come across that in the past and there are a number of different model motherboards that are actually quite bad. So I took a gamble and went with this model board and uh, so far the gamble is paying off for me. These boards are proving to be quite reliable. So generally I'll choose the, I think it's the i5-4590 or I choose the i7-4590. So they're the two processors that I'll put into most of my uh, higher performing systems. So again, i5, i7, um, H97M plus motherboard. And again, in this type of setup, I strongly recommend going for a dual channel memory configuration. Again, using the Kingston value select memory. Um, keep it simple. Remember, this is working on a formula of um, a low return rate. So we're working on, we want the computer to be reliable. We don't want it to have problems. So process motherboard RAM. That's your, that's your heart of your computer, so keep it simple. Um, again, I'm a massive fan of Intel solid state hard drives or any solid state hard drive. Uh, I would strongly recommend that you have a solid state hard drive as your system drive. Um, and maybe to put some games on it and then have like a one, two or three terabyte hard drive as your data drive to store data on and things like that. So you put your main couple of games on your solid state and put all of your other games over here on your mechanical drive. Um, the Seagate three terabyte hard drives are quite, uh, have quite good performance. The one and two terabytes, not so much. The three terabytes is where they start getting a bit of performance. Okay, so the next part, once you go past the process motherboard and RAM, the next thing you need to look at, video cards. Okay, so for a significant amount of time, the best value video card was a GTX 660. Um, it's just that sweet spot of price and performance. It's just a solid card that gives you game performance that will play the games quite happily. Um, so we've sold many, many of these GTX 660, uh, 660s, both in Gigabyte and Asus. And then, depending on your budget, oh, we forgot this little guy. Okay, 
Okay, so the next part of the gaming system that you need is the power supply. So I've been using the Antec power supplies. I tend to go for the, the True Power Classics. These are based on the old True Power designs. Uh, these are not a modular power supply. They're a bit of a, um, uh, they take a bit of extra work, but what would you rather? A little bit easier when you build the computer or would you want it to last longer? So I, I believe these power supplies will last a, a good amount of time. The True Powers in general um, have quite good longevity and there's still many of them um, in service today that are running quite well. So this is a Seasonic based power supply and uh, this is the power supply I'll reach for to power these video cards I'm going to show you. Um, <coughs> so with the video cards, once you want to go above a GTX 660, you then start looking at GTX 760. Um, and then above that, GTX 770. Um, this is the card that I personally put into my computer uh, a couple of weeks ago, but I can talk about that in a little while. Um, my computer is getting on to three years old. So when we build these computers, we want them to offer um, the performance that lasts. You don't want to build something and be disappointed with. My computer is almost three years old and it's still a great computer. No complaints, no thoughts of upgrading. So you want to build a computer that will last that test of time. So GTX 770. 760 and then there's always like uh 780 780 ti's the gtx 780 ti's are a very very good video card as you go up in video card performance you need to just go up a little bit more in power supply this one here is the uh granddaddy video card or not the biggest but it's pretty close to it it's the gtx Titan Black. These cards are what are used in a SLI configuration, one of my recent builds. Um, so you can look down below to have a look at that video. So this here is not something you would use in this configuration. In this configuration that we're talking about with the i7 or i5 processor plus this motherboard you would only go GTX 660, GTX 760, 770. You'd even hesitate on the 770. You just go for the mid-range gaming video cards. Once you want to go up in performance generally I would then start looking at the Z97 boards and a full-size board to complement the system being a full speed gaming system. So this is more of a average budget gaming system. So these are the parts that I would recommend myself and I've used them many, many, many times over with uh, continued success. Um, look for part two when I build an average type gaming system. So that'll be sometime in the near future. Thanks.